by setting it all at night, I could give the film a certain atmosphere through its lighting and through its sound and through its staging that you can show like a sort of larger than life world in Britain, you know, like, and, and, but, but I owe that to American cinema as well. Like, you know, the, the films that I grew up watching. Jack Daw, I love this film. It is intense. It's an intense thriller that's gritty uh, and it keeps you guessing every step of the way. You wrote and directed uh, Jack Daw. What inspired this film? So it was inspired by me sitting down and realizing that I needed to make a film uh, if I ever wanted to get into the film world and, and not just make TV for the rest of my life, which I have no problems with. That is not a criticism. It's just I have a desire to make films. So I felt like unless I sit down and write one, no one's ever going to give me one. So, yeah, literally picked up. I, I was kind of in between two two uh, TV jobs at the time, sort of unemployed and thought, I can't really sit around and just watch movies like for another month. So I thought I should probably sit down and write one. Also, my partner, she basically stopped talking to me uh, on a holiday. So she she was um, she was rehearsing for something she was doing next. So she and basically I realized that she just needed to get her head into it. So I put my headphones on and I began writing, and that was when it all started. I love that. I thought that story was going to go south there for a second when she you said she stopped talking to you. I was like, oh no. I hope this isn't like <laughs> yeah. that. No, it was a, it was good. It's basically like uh, if you, if I just needed to stop annoying her on holiday and just like she was like, can you just go put your headphones on and like do something for a bit? So thank God. She found me incredibly annoying on holiday because I went off and wrote a film. <laughs> now, this story centers around a uh, former motocross champ, uh, an army vet, Jack Dawson. Tell me about the main character of Jack Dawson and how you conceptualize the character. Jack, for me, was, you know, based off kind of like people I kind of knew growing up, you know, semi-autobiographical in some ways as well. Like you said, you put your you put your things you've learned from your own experience onto these kind of characters. And I think he, for me, is, is sort of a uh, like... A vehicle to represent um like the struggles with masculinity in a working class town where i come from like so you know but without doing that through a drama i felt like let's let's try and do that through a bit of genre now what made uh oliver jackson cohen the right fit to play jags i think he's great in this movie like he brings the emotion he, he has he's an action star written all over him what made him the right right fit to, to play jack and what did he bring to the role that wasn't on the page Pretty much everything you just said. <laughs> like, <laughs> that was exactly why I went with him. So it's good that he's come across that way. I had that exact same feeling about Ollie. I didn't, uh, you know, was not like the first choice in my, like not necessarily like I had a first choice even. I don't mean that. What I mean is when I sat down and wrote Jack, I didn't have any actors in mind at all. I just wrote a character that I I, I didn't write it for anybody. Um, you know, and then I had like casting directors like throwing ideas at me and it was I was actually meeting Ollie for something completely different, just just to, like we were having dinner together. And whilst I was at dinner, I, I I was telling him about the movie, and then I was like, "Hey, why do you read it? Like, you be you, you know." And he he said to me straight away, like he was like, "Like, I'm not right for that part, like at all. I don't think you're looking for the right guy." And I said, "Well, no, that's exactly why you are, because that's the way you responded, like with such humility." And he uh, anyway, so he went away and read the script, and he he was like, "I love the script." I remember him texting me that night. He read it straight away. He's like, "I love the script." And he's like, but I've got one problem with it. I was like, what? He's like, I'm definitely not right for the parts. <laughs> so so that was his response. And then I, I convinced him, you know, that I think he is right for all those reasons that you mentioned, you know, like he does have this physicality that's great for it. He also has, you know, he's a great actor and he has this sensitive side to him that I think a lot of the people who would have been obvious choices wouldn't have necessarily brought to it. I was going to ask, because uh, there's the uh, scene kind of like towards the beginning of the movie that takes place in water. Um, that scene looked extremely difficult to shoot. Was that the most challenging sh uh, part of the shoot for you? It was it, probably not the most challenging. It had every every sequence in this movie had its own challenges because they were also very different from each other. Sure. That it was challenging because we were shooting in the north of England in December in minus 12, and that's in the North Sea. So you can imagine like trying to even convince anyone to put uh, Oliver Jackson coin in there for like a good six or seven hours. Dry suit or no dry suit, it don't make a lot of difference. Right. So I, I convinced Ollie to do that. He didn't complain, by the way. So he was definitely not like one. He was like hands on everything, I'll do it. He was good. Uh, but I, I also had to convince producers and stuff that it was okay that I volunteered myself to also be in the water with them the whole time. So every time he's in the water, I was also in there. 
that was definitely challenging because I was like, why did I volunteer for this? <laughs> they could have quite happily put me in a boat alongside him, but I, I felt like I needed the camaraderie. You know what I mean? So I love it, man. You got to lead by example. And that's exactly what you did. Now, um, I love the tone of this, of this film. I think the tone of this film is amazing. Um, it's intense. It's a gritty cat and mouse thriller. It almost feels like a, like a noir. Can you talk to me about capturing the tone of this film? I wanted to get away from making just sort of a, Brit, you know, if, when we do British crime thrillers, often historically they've been like quite naturalistic. And I wanted to do something that, uh, you know, lent into a kind of more genre piece that I would have watched when I was growing up. So, but which would have been American films, you know, like John Carpenter is a big reference, Walter Hill, you know, or like Tony Scott, those kind of movies all like became the influence probably over the years to me to to make something like Jackdaw, convincing British finances and British audiences that you can make that kind of film over here is tricky. But like I I so so I needed to like make sure that it by setting it all at night, I could give the film a certain atmosphere for its lighting and for its sound and for its staging that you can show like a sort of larger than life world in Britain, you know, like and and but but I owe that to American cinema as well. Like, you know, the, the films that I grew up watching. Um I mean, that was important to me. It's so funny. You literally just answered my next question, which is this film does definitely feel like a throwback to me, a, a, much like the films you had just mentioned. Now, you shot this in northern uh, England, which is a, a, a crucial uh, part of the film's uh, atmosphere. Can you talk about the energy northern England brought to Jackdaw? Yeah, so I, I grew up there. That place that you see on screen is literally where I grew up. So it's like I knew all the places I could get uh, production value out of quick, but would also lend me to this big you know, this big, these big set pieces and stuff. Uh, I was just telling somebody earlier that that landscape, those oil refineries uh, where I grew up is where Tony and Ridley Scott also grew up, but we grew up in the same town. And that was Ridley's influence for Blade Runner, like that, those oil refineries. So they're opening. Really? Shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a, he literally looked out of his window as a kid at that exact view, those fa factories that were using Jackdaw and was like, that's that was his inspiration for the design of Blade Runner. So for me, I was always like, OK, what if I just use that landscape in an in a live action film, you know, and it's got it's all there. And it's like, you know, so so that that's where we started with it. And it like helped me know what the world was of Jack Dorf. So it was almost like if I started with that ingredient, what what could I um, you know, I knew not what to add and what to take away to keep it in that world and keep it in that atmosphere, you know? Right, right, right. Now, uh, Jackdaw is your feature directorial debut. How did projects like The Sandman, Doctor Who, Willow, uh, His Dark Materials help you prepare to make your feature debut, if, if at all? Oh, yeah, they they totally did. I mean, you know, I, I got to thank having that work over the years as like a kind of crash course in every different kind of style and genre for me. It was, you know, getting to do all the big set pieces I've had the luxury of doing in the big shows and learning what does work and what doesn't work and doing it with someone else's money. You know what I mean? It's like that for me, it was like the best film school I could ever go to. So, you know, with Jackdaw, I will say it felt like going back to the beginning. It wasn't like, you know, uh, we, we had to work, with what we had available and try and make something bigger. Um, but because of the skills that I'd learned off those shows, you know, I I felt like I could do that with, with greater ease than I would have done if I'd just done this film a few years ago, definitely. Absolutely. Now, you've worked on some of my favorite properties. I'm going to switch gears for a second because you introduced us to Jodie Whittaker as the doctor. Now, sadly, her time has come to an end. But what excites you about seeing Chuti um, Gatwa uh, portray the doctor? Oh, I think Chuty's going to be great. I mean, look, I know loads of people who are working on that show. I know Chuty personally. I actually met him the other week and we talked about this. And it's like, I feel like I don't, I don't know. I mean, we, we, you know, we, we were doing something new with, with Jordy. Chuty's going to bring something even fresher to the table. And it's like, and they've got, you know, they've got a big budget now on that show as well. Like they've got the collaboration now with the US. So it's like, I, I just think it's going to be like, are we going to open it up to a whole new audience? Like people who would never even looked at Doctor Who. I think, you know, Charity is like, when I found out that he was doing it, I just saw what a great choice. It's going to be uh, yeah. As soon as I saw him, I was like, yo, this is this is a new Doctor Who for sure. Um, yeah. Now, uh, this is also the second round for uh, RTD, Russell T. Davies. What does that mean for Doctor Who this time around? Well, I think what Russell's done in the past has been brilliant. So it's like, you know, I, everyone knows when you go away from something and you come back to it, like you come back, you see. And, and uh, Russell, I mean, Russell's like learned from it before. It's going to bring 
you know, so much like uh, what a luxury to have to get like to come back to something that you did such a great job of in the first place, but also now with new ingredients and like new budget and new production team behind it. And I've worked with Bad Wolf who are making it, you know, so I made his dark materials with they're an excellent company. I feel in uh, Jane Tranter who set it up in Wales in the first place, she's back on it as a producer, exec producer. It's like, you know, the only thing that's missing here, I need to be part of this. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you you absolutely need need to be a part of this because some of some of your episodes are some of my favorite. Um now, are you coming back for season two of The Sandman? And if you are, what are you most excited to bring to life? I'm coming back for season two. Uh, we were shooting it already, but we've we've gone down, obviously, because of the strikes. Sure. So honestly, like the whole show so far has been incredibly exciting. And like what you just said about Russell, it's like we, we've done it before. So we know what worked and didn't. And we know like now coming out, it, it was scary coming out it the first time because it's like we're the first time you know putting that on screen and everyone was like who's tried historically has not managed it yet so we're like what's different about us like nothing like we could just mess this up or whatever but you know we we did season one stuff really works some stuff we felt worked less like we've now got all those all that knowledge all that prior knowledge knowledge and we're coming at it again like a, like a team who've done it before and and yeah it just feels really good like the momentum was it's unfortunate about the strikes because it we were like right in the swing of it. it was six weeks into filming it was going really really well and to be excited about one bit it's quite hard to say because it's like honestly it's so every day is different on that show it's a bit like jack doll where every sequence was different every day right. like we're doing like you know greek tragedy and then we're doing like cyberpunk and we're doing like contemporary drama we're doing like cat and mouse chase stuff like is honestly it's such a fun show to work on for that reason are you already um have you already conceptualized your second feature film and also uh has jack Daw kind of influenced your perspective on on filmmaking now that you're now that the dust is settled big time yeah i mean it's i i, I think part i i haven't got something 100 that i'm going to do next and part of the exciting bit for me is going like what should i do next you know right. and i'm kind of feeling it out with jack door like seeing what the response is it's like you know but at the same time as i love the delving in that world of jack door i also like the thing that excites me as maybe you've picked up from the previous things we've just talked about is like doing something totally different you know what i mean and and i think i've had the luxury of doing that in the shows that i've worked on so i don't want to just get pigeonholed into one thing as well because i've got like other stuff to give so i think yeah who knows man i might do a romantic comedy next <laughs> like you never know you know what i hope you're not done with the world of jack doll either because i feel that like there's uh there's there's much there's story to tell even before we see this film i feel like there's a good prequel that we want to that i want to see with jenna coleman's character and oliver uh jackson co and i feel like there's a lot of story to be told there too and i kind of want to just see where this world you know what else is in this world but congratulations on the film man it, it is absolutely amazing i really really enjoyed it 